Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I am Samir Mehta, your moderator. This is session number 168. Today we have completed 14 years of PCC Life Case. This journey, for those of you who may not have known it, began at the Renaissance Hotel in 2007. I was a young man then. Dr. Sharma and I met at his hotel room. It had been a thought we had been thinking about for a while, but it was on that particular day that the roots of CCC life took place. It then took us two years till of course, June, 2009, when we formally started it. And today we complete 14 years of this remarkable journey. There have been many amazing components of this. For years, we were parts of Medscape, then the American College of Cardiology, before understanding that our format fitted best with our doing it independently. And thereon came uh, valuable additions to our websites, going on YouTube, tremendous help from Kimberly Costio on various aspects of social media. And today, the program is watched in 191, 191 countries, more than 3 million page views. And we thank you for your support, for your trust and for your friendship. Several other innovations occurred uh, in uh, 2012. We were doing simultaneous translations in Mandarin and in Spanish. Amazing things in this journey have happened with Dr. Sharma. He's not only leading the best interventional cardiology program in the United States, but his hospital in India probably has the best interventional cardiology program also. Dr. Kinney, in the meantime, has easily become the world's best women operator. There are times I tell her that don't get fixated on women. You are probably one of the best operators irrespective of gender. Anu, it's been a pleasure working with you, watching your skills and uh, transmitting your incredible lessons to a global audience. The hospital Mount Sinai in the meantime, uh, only good things that has happened. It stays number one in New York State in every possible criteria. And now it has the best and the biggest interventional cardiology program, including a very throbbing and vibrant structural heart. I calculated and in the time the CCC live cases has been on, almost 200 fellows have graduated and I am sure they are making Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney proud. There have been various other innovations in the format. Uh, we are truly high def. Uh, and of course, Med Inbox became broad, Med, AV and Danny Trottier. If you are there, thank you so much for your tremendous help over the last decade. We also introduced several innovations including the AUC criteria, which has become the pinnacle of what we do. Every case is as per the criteria. There is a hard team discussion and every case is academic and will continue to do so. Finally, just about every lesson which we have learned in the 14 year journey of CCC live cases has taken a new life of itself with MedStream 360. This is a program which is now becoming more and more popular around the world. Danny, if you could kindly show the announcement. Today evening, eight o'clock, we start. This is going to be session number nine. For people who are still not familiar with this transformative part of interventional cardiology, 12 global sites. We start on Tuesday, eight o'clock from Harbin, go on to Nanjing, Proceed then on to India with two exceptional sites at the Madras Medical Mission in Chennai and Medanta Hospital with Dr. Praveen Chandra in New Delhi. Then move over to Europe where we have sites in Bordeaux, Madrid and Copenhagen, each dedicating two hours and often two or even three cases to the global transmission. We then jump on to South America and do cases from the tremendous cath lab at Hospital Dante Pasanesis with Dr. Fausto Ferris and Ricardo Costa, then on to Buenos Aires with Dr. Oscar Mendes, jumping then on to Montreal with the tremendous center at the Montreal 
art institutions stay in Canada with Winnipeg, coming down to Mount Sinai doing uh, endovascular cases with the, the incomparable Dr. Prakash Krishnan, and finally finishing the 24 hour transmission with Dr. Saibal Kar at Thousand Oaks, California. So far, we have completed eight sessions, a total of 159 coronary structure and peripheral cases. Do join us today. Session number nine starts at uh, 8 p.m. today. With this introduction and in a celebratory mood, the completing 14 years of CCC live cases, let me take you over to Dr. Samin Sharma and Dr. Anu Kinney to possibly share with you session number 169 of the biggest and the best live web. Samin, good morning. Uh, yep. Uh, 168, you're absolutely yep. right. Uh, this yeah. will be 168, completing yes. the 14 years. So let's see if we get a video signal. Good. All right. Beautiful description of our tremendous journey. Uh, and you have been with us right from the beginning. And of course, the, the med stream uh, things are uh, with extension of the CCC live for the global teaching. And we thank our viewers. Back in July 2009, when our first episode was, we, are, we had a total 259 uh, people live and uh, archived, which has gone to now over 25,000 per episode, per, per month, which combines all three, coronary, structural and peripheral. Corner is usually about 18,000, as uh, Samir said, 190 plus countries. With that note, and we are so thankful to our viewers, we have the same format, we have kept it with little modification, but uh, try to show the complex case in the entirety. It may sometimes took two hours. Uh, I think the longest has been 135 minutes that CTO case, uh, but were successful. And I know there in during this journey of the 168, we had a few uh, failures, few complications, but all manageable, all from the teaching point of view, we shared uh, with our audience, even the patient who arrested uh, back in 2013 with the uh, Spencer King being inside. And when patient went home and we got the patient interview at a follow-up. And that case, as we know, was written in Jack Intervention, editorial by Spencer King. With that note, uh, we show a different type of case, which we have not shown before. Uh, that will be the case today of uh, patient post-cabbage. So let's start our presentation. Our disclosures and uh, uh, the supporters are the same. Now, this is the case number 168, 67-year-old, very long-standing history of CAD in terms of cabbage and multiple PCIs, uh, and uh, now presented with class 3 angina and positive stress test and various factors of the CAD lift listed on the left side. So what happened is he had a vein graft to the diagonal which was closed. In last, uh, I would say, six, seven times, intervention has been to the diagonal, native, including brachytherapy. We had done everything and that diagonal is completely closed. And then uh, had a disease in the uh, distal LED via the lima. That's what uh, Anu did a few weeks ago. And now coming for the because continuous symptoms you want show the circumflex which is closed and now there is a retrograde limb of the vein graft. So let's show uh, from the angiographic point of view, show the fluoro, yeah, I know, show, yep. So this is where we are, the OM ramus is okay, circ is total, uh, you'll see it filling from the RCA, this is uh, LED you see. And the diagonal, the diagonal so is gone. multiple stents in the diagonal which has been closed. Yes. Yeah. So Lima, the V1 did the coil for that uh, accessory intercostal artery, but you see the diagonal filling from the Lima. Yep. And this is that vein graft. There's a disease in the retrograde portion of the PDA in the RPL, and then that's uh, so, you know taking care of the entire circ. The question came back mm. when infralateral ischemia, that do you go to the native circ or you do the RCA? But patient has an inferior wall also. Look at the significant lesion in the inferior, the PDA and then in the RPL. And those lesions are new compared to a few months ago, a few years ago, uh, particularly in the RPL. Uh, so let's uh, play this one again. Yes, see, see yeah. it very, very clearly. Yep. Yeah. And, and then gives the collateral yeah. to the circumflex. So we thought, the, let's show this retrograde limb. We are now not done the retrograde limb PCI of this kind before and will be good for our audience, always a different type of case. 
and uh, so this is where we are. Unique, uh, never, never seen a presentation like this. Uh, uh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's go to uh, our next continuation of uh, my presentation. So I complete and we start the case. Let's go back to the slides again. Okay. So basically, uh, this is the, you know, all criteria is also besides the various vessel disease, if your lima is closed or lima is closed or open, uh, and then you go with the criteria in this particular case, lima is open. And, and then basically, as you can see here, a uh, patient is on two drugs, intermediate high risk finding on the non value testing, and uh, therefore it's appropriate, as you can see here, uh, this particular case. So coming back to the point, what we are going to do today, uh, imaging guided stage complex PCI of SVG to RPDA retrograde limb and or circumflex CTO. Imaging only if uh, we need to go to the circumflex uh, in some way. And uh, we're knowing that many times the CTOs, very tough to cross even with the wire, uh, even the wire cross, nothing goes. So we have laser ready as a backup. So we started getting a laser warmed up, knowing it takes about 10 to 15 minutes in our total occlusions. So rather than going jamming multiple catheters, it's probably easier. Just go with the laser uh, and uh, they work very well. So now, Anu, tell us what you're planning to do. What is the guide? So, what is it now? No, this is a multi-purpose guide, which sits very well. Just to be careful, it's already, you know, deep-seated. And we have got to go retrograde, so already took 120 super cross um, with a fielder wire. And the question yeah. is, can I do that uh, 90 degree bend? You have two 90 degree bends, that if I can do, go through that. Yeah. So with the super cross, uh, let's see. Getting the super cross 120. In this case is also a departure from your preferred anti-grade strategy. And uh, you've already explained the reason for doing it is because yeah. of the inferior wall ischemia. Exactly. Absolutely. So both. So this case, if we can do this, we'll, we kind of uh, improve circulation in two territories, inferior and the lateral. So you see how uh, we navigated the... Okay, let me go back. Yeah. So the wire went down, yeah, and now you see that uh, super cross 120, I'm advancing and then change the direction, pull back the wire, change the direction in such a way that it will get into the retrograde limb. So we are in the retrograde limb now. Yeah, good, beautiful. Handling of the super cross. Yeah. So now I advance it more. And now let me see if it will make another turn. We have the super cross and the venture. Venture is now the monorail is back order over the wire still available. Uh, and uh, so we actually getting more, you know, better uh, support with the super cross than venture. I was the biggest supporter of venture, but we, you know, getting a lot of uh, times when venture did not go and super cross made the turn. So I think super cross because of the steady uh, and uh, it just points 120 degrees. It's very useful in these cases. You know, I'm sure, uh, you know, all around uh, the conferences, uh, so many viewers come and talk to us. Uh, one of the things I think they have always uh, mentioned is that uh, CCC Live has also shown several new techniques, new devices, and uh, your experience and mentioning about uh, preferring Supercross over the venture is clearly such an example. So, I mean, there is already a question okay. which has come up saying that what if right. you're not able to do retrograde would you do the right and then try anti-grade? Yeah, so that's a very good point. So do we go with the anti-grade right or we just go with the circumflex? Then we only will remain is that area of uh, the RPL, which will not be uh, reverse Christ. So then I would just go with the anti-grade circumflex and the right, you know, both these vessels have been closed for last 10 years. Uh, circ as well as this. So I would say that do we do the right or we go with the integrate right. Actually, we can take a picture of the right a little more again. But definitely, the circumflex looks like a shorter segment and easier, better success, uh, in my opinion. You do What's have a contralateral injection here possible yeah. also, no? Right. So then I will get a contralateral injection. Yeah. Lil die now, right? You're in some different branch. Oh. It is quite an angle. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You're absolutely right. It's gone into some small... Slightly different, yeah. 
Good. Yeah. Now it's in the RPL. Now it is in the RPL. Need to, RPL is a very long RPL. We can go a little further. If we can go, that's the key here. And you see the supercross has made that turn. Wow. Amazing. Just nice what handling. I meant, uh, you know, uh, it's not that um, venture. Venture is has its role in uh, many cases. If you do have I'm still die. I think angular diagonal, venture do play a good role. I think uh, this super toss is good. For now you're in different branch. Most of the circumflex. So pull the viewers, our ceiling camera will show you there is no torquing device there, just the fingers. And I have uh, no. reflected, watched, and uh, mentioned about the skills and once again to be seen today. Samin, you were mentioning about the audience uh, to be remarked here also that more recently there has been a massive uh, audience in China. Yes. Superb. Although we cannot get the Chinese data apparently for obvious reasons. Uh, but uh, they remain into their step. No, no. Following, following the, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Anthony different wire. Uh, yeah, different wire, yeah. So what are, why do you want? Let's take okay, a picture. Try with the yeah. 300 run through. If it does yeah. not go, then we are done. I mean, we will or not whisper. take care of this part, right? No, let's take a picture. You were, you made some turn. No, no, it's going to some smaller branch. Yeah, good. Hold it there. No, One no, second. It's still small branch. I know, but let's take a picture. See we which branch same it is. Thing. Same thing. See? Yeah, so that's it. So no, pull back a little bit, right. yeah, and use a little torquer. You need a whisper. whisper does yeah, not good. Here we go. No. All you had to do was to whisper. Mm. Yeah, this is good. No. Yeah. It's not in that branch. Okay, give me the run through. It could be the tip of the. Hmm. Also, it's, uh, when you have to, so many ninety degree bend, I don't think uh, you're. Yeah, look at the wire. Yeah, wire which has come out. Yeah, look at it. Samin, I was uh, moderating from our uh, Chinese sites uh, last week and uh, got a first hand, uh, uh, you know, over the years of COVID, uh, I had not visited uh, China, but the progress which is happening in interventional cardiology there both from the educational point of view with the Some development of their own companies. And uh, uh, there are, I was told there are 110 companies creating structural valve devices in China, 110 companies. Wow. So yep. it has only confirmed my belief that uh, number but one. Number there. Two, I know, yeah. but it's not going to take a stand. No, but balloon will go. That's fine. Let's get a balloon. Yeah, good. Very good. And we got a guideliner. Good. So now you see the wire has gone. It has made 280 degree curves. Yeah, let's hold it there. I think the good part there is that I don't see much calcification. Yeah. Godzilla? Make our time yep. easier. And two a balloon first? No, no, two five. It's a big vessel. Compliant. Yeah, two five compliant. 12. 12. Compliant. Pink balloon or the track balloon, okay? Mini track, one of the two. What do you have? You open the track? Yeah, open. You have OC row strand? Yeah. Have that on. yeah, that's fine. Do we have OC row strand? Yeah. yeah. So, Anu, yeah. there is a question which has come for you. Which mm -hmm. do you find as the most trackable balloon? Yeah. Uh, both. I think the mini tracks and then mm -hmm. there is the Metronic uh, new, what is the name of the balloon? Yeah, mini track Abbott is very good. What's that pink balloon name? Euphora, Euphora. and Euphora yeah. Metronics. Yeah, these are the two that we tried. But what use. happened to new Boston scientific balloons? No good? Not as good? There, there is your what are the new Boston scientific balloons? Emerge. Okay, good. Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, fine. Okay, now we are advancing the Godzilla first because ultimate goal is to open with the balloon and then put a stent. 
good. We'll not go more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. It's even gone beyond there. Yeah. No, it's just at that angle. Right. Which we expected. Step. Yeah. Yeah. So first angle before the PDA retrograde limb. We have the stent ready. Uh, what's that? 2 to 5, what length do you have? Huh? Okay, 18 probably, right? Hmm. Not Don't open yet. If things go, we need it. Actually, you know, if you think about it, RCA may be a shorter lesion also, anti-grade. If you think about. But there is a branch there at that level. Would that not uh, No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know, but I'm saying that it will be a total blunt, ambiguous cap. Yeah. No, no. Right. But can it still be thought about? But I think the circumflex will be much easier. Short segment, as you can see, based on that. Virus come back a little bit, but mm. that's okay. Mm. That's fine. No, only balloon will. Yeah, good. ACT is good. Patient on Angio Max. Yep. Good. Okay, okay guys, good. open the Very good. quickly. Yeah. Good. I mean, another, another up, very interesting question. Hmm. I, I don't know how to answer this. Which is there one single the most stable case you can think of? Keep it hard. I know, but you need to go a little further first. No, I'm saying we have not crossed the legion. You have. Yeah, so means I can tell you the highest viewed is our LED diagonal bifurcation with the bilat both vessels rotablation and two stent approach, which has been viewed by 45,000 people. That has been our, uh, I mean, Kim will tell you, uh, unless some new one has come up, but that has Give been our stand biggest. Quickly. Huh? Stand, stand. Okay, really I'm important. deflating now. No, no, don't, don't. Okay, balloon is coming back. I mean, beyond so far, so good. Beyond Give me the strand. Yeah, okay, down. Excellent. Good. Uh, yep. And, and the second, second one has been our retrograde. We did one uh, retrograde RCA PCI that was like about right. 28, 30,000. The biggest of the. That part, but was it any your your own personal favorite? I mean, was there? A, I mean, the most popular one I can understand. Yeah. Was it also your most uh, memorable case? No, I would say most memorable case was the first one, which Absolutely. you did in July no of 2009 one. with Impella assisted left yeah. main intervention EF of 20 percent, and we did a, a rotablation uh, and. Yes, Multiple stents. Pay attention to the yeah. steps. Okay. Okay. Let's go now. Yeah. I mean, okay. What are you doing now? To keep talking then. What are you doing now? Me to talk. Okay. Yes. No, we just advanced. They should have seen how we advanced. The right. Good. Godzilla. Tell so us. Now yeah. We are going with the stent. Okay. So. Five onyx. Okay. Balloon no. inflated. Guy. The, the Godzilla was advanced. No, Osiro. 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 Yeah. Two to five eighteen. Osiro. Why you? Go? Yeah. We did. Yeah. Osiro, you see that, how everything has taken that turn. By Osiro is the biotronic. It's a very thin strut. Uh, as you know, the only stent which have beaten uh, Zions in their trial. Okay, give me the... Bioflow, yeah. Is the Osiro. The, there was a lower MI, uh, lower side branch closure, lower stent thrombosis. Yeah. Bioflow, there, four trials. Some some comparison between Osiro and even the Supraflex. Yeah, good. good. Yeah, okay, they both probably will be the same way. Up. Yeah, go up. Right. It's another uh, exceptional stent yeah. from the yeah. 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 Okay. And there we take a 2.25 again. Can we dissect it? Which one? Look at the cap. No, no, no. This nothing. This is slow flow from this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, then nothing, okay, nothing. Down. Yeah, flow is steady. So now you do a guideliner back and do a balloon proximal optimization. Here? Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, a little bit. And I would say two, two atmosphere and guideliner, you should be back now. So what is, I mean, what is the purpose of doing this two, two atmosphere here? So I would say that any time you do the plaque, the lesion, the plaque goes out, particularly diffuse disease. So I call it a, uh, you're doing like massage. Okay, ready? Gentle, yeah. gentle. Because like look at the, yeah, yeah. so okay. it's a damped pressure. We are going yeah. to go very, very slow. slow. I know there is another oh. yeah, very. Yeah, yeah. See that? Yeah. Why there is a dissection occur? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. We can yeah. put a short stand there. Hmm. Okay. Everything will be okay. Let's get a 2.25 another one. What's no, no, the no. short? Uh, get a 2.5. 
No, no, same. 2.25. What else you have? We use the 18 now, right? You have Nine. a 2.5? Yeah, 2.25. No, we don't have that company. Only 2.25. Do you want 2.259 right now, approximately, which will go? Okay. What yeah. else you have? No, 2.259 will be okay. Huh? Nine. Nine. 2.259? Yeah. It? Yeah. Okay, give me. Yeah. No, 2.25. Yeah. Then otherwise, we... That's the reason it. I never took the gut, uh, gut seal out completely. Hopefully no, but we would not have seen it otherwise. No, I told you there that it looked like a cap. That it was dissection. Now, we were so gentle with everything, we really don't know why it happened, right? Yeah. Unless but angulation will happen, yeah. No, we, we wired. Nine? No, 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 we don't need 22. You want a long one? No, right? proximally we'll do a long one. In, in the retrograde limb, not in the RPL. RPL 9 will be good enough. If it, okay. Hopefully it'll go now. Hmm. If not, it's okay. You have to leave that. The no, we'll do a balloon, uh, more balloon, longer. I want it at 2.5. No, not for that area. 2.25 is good. We can get 2.25 is good. Approximately, I think uh, you can get 2.518. The retrograde limb, if need to be. 23. Okay, 23. 2.523 is We are 2.522. Very good. Good, good. Then we'll use that. Okay, oh, good. good. Wow. Easy. Look at the look at the beauty of this. I mean, why use the zines here and why not? No, no, no. We are using no because we did not have 2.5. We only carry 2.25, but we are 2.522. Right? Let me no. take a scene. Eh? Don't don't give die. No, few uh, millimeter back, back, right? Pull back. One millimeter. Mm -hmm. No, are we? You want to do a stand? Boot? You cannot see the stand. Boot. No, yeah, good. good. Going up. Okay, good. Go up. Okay. One second more. The you the go little further. Balloon is not going to make a no, no, no. We don't so need high pressure. Go so advance a little bit. Yeah. Okay. We don't need a yeah. Good. I'm going here high. Twenty atmosphere. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. And now you want to take a picture again? Yeah. Gentle. Yeah. Even that time was. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, very good. Most I think we can leave everything yep. alone now, right? Yep. Most this thing is okay. No, but you have to do the balloon with this coming back. I'm sorry. So what's the question? The, there is a viewer who wants the yeah. exact technique to be explained how the guideliner was advanced. Okay, we'll have the floor on that, yeah. Now, before, once you take it, that's un, we're not going to do. Are we happy with AV continuation? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's a buyer, yeah. Because once I pull this yeah, back, we know that. Done. Yep. So, okay, get us that uh, 23 strength. 22, yeah. 2.5, 22, or 0. We have it. Go up. Dilate. Sorry, one second. So, this is that balloon you're using it to dilate. Same. To that dilate, yeah. yeah. Only a little for distal. Yeah, good, good. And you think with the guide liner, guidezilla pulled back there, you'll be able to advance the strength now? Yeah, now, yeah. Okay. Good, good. You're good. Yep. See, what is it did? Uh, you want to do again? Yeah, so, so what you do is, uh, as the balloon is uh, deflating, uh, just advance over the balloon gently. Beautiful. Yep. Okay. So I go forward, dilated. As Did he's deflating, he... as he's deflating, advancing. I'm advancing. Your telescope, yeah. yeah. So that's that's exactly the steps we did. Exactly. Thank you. Now, are you sure or longer? No, 23, 22. That's fine. 22. 25, 22. Yeah, we are 2.5, 22. Yeah. Then we have to take you out have everything. A preference yeah. between the guidezilla and the guideliner. Metronic also have another device of theirs, right? What is it called? No. For Godzilla type. Godzilla type. What's the name? Guideliner. No, no, not Metronic. Uh, 
Metronic has another one. That the teleport, telescope. See the color. I be okay or I'm good. Yeah, yeah, good, good. The box. Expiry date of the stent. Always when they open the stent, we all ask them the expiry of the date. Duration of this stent. Good. The two five twenty-two. Is it two point five twenty-two or zero again? Metronic is the telescope. Telescope, yeah. So there are many of them. All of them, so we can show whatever they can use. Yeah. It's really, become such an important tool in our uh, managing complex cases. Good. Uh, so once you placed the strength, and now I will uh, connect, connect. Yeah. Okay. And that's the time we connect. Make sure you are connected, because otherwise the balloon will move and this and that. Okay, now some die. Yeah. But this is okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, good. Good. No, you are too far. Go. I put back. Yeah. Okay. Good. Go, Go up. Sixteen. Sixteen. Demonstration and uh, sir, we just takes care of the RC. Not the sir. Okay, get a Vera Pamil ready. Take this out. We don't need the guide liner now. And you see that guide liner has been out now. Guide guide has gone in quite a bit. So make sure you pull back the guides a little bit. Good. And you want some medicine first? Oh, you want medicine? Okay. Or you want to take a picture? Okay. Let's right. take so a look. So far, STs are good, right? Yeah. Let's see without anything. Okay. What we have created. Wow. wow. Good. Look at that. Hmm. Nice. Now you can take out everything and then give some more medicine. Yeah. Well, FML, nitro also because it's a new uh, vessel down there. I'm going to take out the wire slowly. Yeah, exactly. Now same. See the wire? There's a little bit of diastasis there. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, let's give our... But the even... Key step person. also is things you plan. This is what we have to do. And then be quick because... There's a risk of uh, slow flow thrombosis yeah. of the vein graft with the Godzilla sitting there. So the total time Godzilla was in was probably 10 minutes. Yeah. Also very clearly always have a little slow, uh, less time for nitride. the catheter. So yeah. Yeah. Nipride. Some people are nipride. I'm more of a Verapamil fan. Uh, nipride, you know. Also, the uh, EKG very important. Yeah. What is this now? Um, I'm okay. Yeah, there because was if so there was EKG SC elevation, then we know there's something happening uh, at the vessel level. So all the time, if you see as we were working on the RPL, both lead 2, lead 3 had a little bit of uh, ST changes, ST elevation. But One other than that, flush. things yeah. were okay. Flush a little bit. Yep. Not die. No, we did. Auto flush. I always do the auto flush, which is good. Okay, so you want full mag or low Not mag? this. Yeah, this. Let's do this mag first. Now, there's a little diastasis that we yeah. had to answer what that is. No, that it, is, I think, uh, color dissection. Remember, I kept asking, yeah. is AV continuation okay? AV con which I was concerned okay. about. Okay, let's take a picture See? first. See to believe it. Yeah. That's fine. That's okay. Yeah. I think it's about during the wiring. Yeah, but that's okay. Little extra, you know, little diastasis in the wall. Rest is all good. Now, what about the PRU point of view? What antiplatelet therapy? Is effient responder has been on effient. We have checked it before, and uh, EF has been 30%. So, any other points uh, here? Now, I think based on this, uh, we can leave it circ alone. Okay. Because circuit now with better collaterals, now their RPL has been opened up, and uh, we'll just uh, uh, decide how it does, and maybe we can do a ischemia uh, testing again after three, four months. This is the last picture.
Yes. So there is a question of uh, how we advanced the Godzilla. So you see that the 2512 balloon that is going all the way to the RPL. So you go as distal as possible with the balloon. And then once you dilate, you can see how gradually we advanced. Inflate. Yeah, inflate, deflate. Yeah. So, Anu, in the you can multiple... see the yeah, you yeah, can see ahead. it advancing. Yeah, yeah, you can see it advancing slow, slow, gentle. In the numerous apps you have, uh, has handling of the Guideliner or Guidezilla been uh, demonstrated also? No. Yeah. Uh, no. Huh? I mean, the step support wise... devices. Support devices in the guide wire. No, we have mentioned right. it in the guide wire and in the device, just the names, not this uh, kind of uh, steps, how to yeah. handle each one of them. No. Mm. I also Make wanted away, to because we wanted uh, we could wanted to do small clips of uh, um, you know prepara preparing the rota, preparing uh, um, how to get ready for the steps of the rota, all these you know small videos we wanted to do. But Good. Yes, it's any questions? Uh, no further at the moment. Uh, the the last one was regarding the the guide uh, guideliner and the technique yeah. but, and i think uh, it was a tremendous actually we showed that in uh, acc also you know acc timing we did a one case of a complex intervention of the left main with as we did a bav then put a impala then we did left main intervention and the second case second day live relay was anu showed a very complex right coronary artery tortuosity when we are people just trying to get at that time how to advance the guard these uh, guide catheter or mother child guide catheter or guide guide extenders and showed very beautifully and i was there actually moderating at that time first day we did the case second day i went there and moderated has been a super uh, step by step uh, now only thing i would say do not use the guide extender for lima. Unsuccessful is okay because this is going to trash the lima. Therefore, it's a class three in our cath lab to use the guide extender catheter for lima. And no matter what it is, it has all all limas have been trashed by using the guide extender. So I just say, and I haven't used in last five years. I may be unsuccessful rare case of the lima to LED, whatever, but not guideliner because that really will uh, just shot it down invaluable recommendation and uh, i'm sure it is these kind of uh, words of wisdom which uh, which draw the viewers to our website uh, make sure uh, there's room to mentioned about it uh, also what, can once you you're going out what's in room three i'm sorry what the total number of uh, apps you have now and uh, I mean, that has been another remarkable part of this journey. Why yeah, did not put that slide? We, are, well, we actually, the device aid which has been released, uh, we can ask Andrew if it is available over the weekend. It was, uh, uh, you know, sent to the app stores last week, hoping it will be ready for the symposium. But uh, over the weekend, it has been uh, released. The device aid. Um, Fantastic. And what are the new ones coming? And what are the new ones coming? No, we are updating uh, Calcificate. That's our next step. Uh, Should I get my ideal. slide for the show those yeah, apps? Show the I have slide. it. Yeah, yeah you keep uh, saying. One second. Anu, when you are talking about uh, updating that, a uh, lot more IVL uh, uh, additions to that, to the Calcificate? Uh, no, not more. means uh, just showing what IVL is and how to be how to use IVL because in the, the original one we already have rota OA and the laser now we will be adding uh, IVL including your own algorithm how you proceed yes. with it with the how to yeah no, for the calcium management of calcific nodule and uh, you know the hybrid uh, approach when you Just there is uh, calcium Several years, uh, it's been a pleasure watching you on this journey, one app after the other, and that hugely expands the value of our uh, live cases. In fact, there are so many cases, you can virtually follow the case uh, with the app and continue to improve your skills. 
I think the biggest uh, mm, uh, what we got uh, our uh, has been for the IVAS. IVAS said that we released about two months ago the downloads and the requests we got for the IVAS because many people across the world, though OCT we released few years back, um, IVAS is something uh, was uh, taken by public um, more readily. Uh, people want to uh, understand uh, how to use IVAS, where to use IVAS, understand the images. So the download actually uh, was the, you know, like when you release a movie, what happens in the first weekend in the box office like that was the, the very big. The other one the, is coming up. Yeah, yeah, we have to show. So then I can tell you all the things that were. All right, guys, show the slide, the first one uh, with all the apps. Done, right? You have to do your things. No, I know. I'll do enough. Yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. More questions coming Next. in. No, no, we have everything. It's old. This is the one latest gave it. MCS so is that... already released. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, but this is the update was given. Yeah, to say it now what it is. Dr. Nikhil Jha, does EPD require in all SVG interventions? Obviously, answer, answer that to is not... no. As you know, that used to be class one before, but since a lot of data have come, initial fire and uh, safer trial showed benefit. But since then, it has been shown that by using device, you may have more trouble. So it has become a class 2A indication, no longer class one. Some actually people saying 2B. We don't use it uh, of the 100. Uh, uh, the the vein graft intervention we do use of uh, EPD is about 15 18 percent ours as well as national so these are all the updated and uh, oh there's another one update of the update okay update of the update okay but uh, every week yeah I see another coming question up. from Dr. Yeah. Saivan Jana Purkar what is the effective dosage of vasodilators in your opinion very good. So one of the which is preferred for me is Verapamil, which is 200 to 400 microgram, uh, or 250 to 500 microgram, as you know. Uh, it's a 2.5 milligram. You dilute in 10, and you give 1 to 2 cc's. Then the new, the of the nitroprusside is 50 to 100 microgram. But make sure that patient become hypotensive with nitroprusside, always ready to give some uh, vasoconstrictor. And usually we give the neosinephrine. Those are the two important vasodilators. Some people use nicardipine. Some people use uh, uh, the, uh, you know, diltiazam and, uh, and adenosine. But those are not that great for that purpose. Yeah. Okay, I know. This you have. Okay, yeah. So if you see... Earlier, SS, uh, MCSA, it was already released uh, like uh, middle of early part of this year. That was uh, how to manage patients with shock. Okay. And that's the lecture I gave yeah. during the, um, I mean, CCC symposium this year. And IVAS is one that was newly re uh, released and the device is available, Andrew? Okay, it's still on the App Store being uh, released. But then if you see your uh, updated uh, bifurcade, because we keep updating and keep adding. This is just the original, original bifurcade app, which was just illustrations. And now so many things have changed in bifurcation technique. We updated that. And calcificate will be updated. Of course, uh, Angio 3D is, uh, you know, how to do angiogram. This is the fellow's request. So we that will be a 3D. Uh, it's almost like a gaming app. Uh, will be the that's one should be released soon but the other one that we got a new request was a co opt risk score to do an app how to evaluate the co opt risk score there was a new publication that came out yeah so that will be the next app that will be coming out yes i think you can have a nephrology score also cin score app no, maybe that's actually let more useful focus. let us focus let's on more useful book. good okay yeah. with that note uh, let's go to our presentation uh, samir right yes please and uh, okay. just wondering i look at those apps and uh, cannot think of anything which has been left uncovered uh, no, i think i can tell you two uh, i still few if you think about one you definitely need for aki then okay. for the bleeding 
I think those are the two you can do. Depth score, I think, is a very primitive. Uh, was not a great, but bleeding definitely. Right now, what is that? The the bleeding and AKI. Those are the you know AKI is so important now as a part of the payment to the institution enhanced payment. The AKI post PCI is the major now. So every case, the NCDR will be presenting the data that how much is our CIN or AKI after PCI compared to the rest of the institutions. So this is a like all criteria type situation, and they just started now in last few months. We we'll don't have the data yet. What is the baseline? And they counted as a 0.5 increase from the baseline. Uh, that is what they defined as a uh, acute kidney injury uh, for patients who have a creatinine not of course on dialysis the biggest question will come if the creatinine is three then what you do will never go 3.5 some people used to have it in the past 10 percent increase or, but i think they're defining as 0.5 you have to have creatinine pre-discharge on every pci patient now okay so let's go to our uh, this part now uh, our the presentation, so which is an uh, international trial from Euro PCR uh, 2023, defines actually Euro PCR. There were a lot of trials. You guys are done. You start doing your things also. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of trials this month as well as next month. I'm going to present four or five each time. Defined flare five years, FAME three, three years, EBC main three years, PICO two, three years, post PCI QFR and flavor trial. Then, focus review of the month will be the importance of calcific nodule. That is the impact of eruptive versus non eruptive calcified nodule morphology on acute and long term outcomes after stenting. The first one is our the trial so defined flare remember the flare trial was that patients with a stable cad majority were stable about 25 percent were no acute coronary syndrome but they were randomized to ifr and ffr and these were the one year data as you can see there uh, overall we know that one year or two year outcomes were equal now very important which i have been emphasizing and other people did not emphasize look at the number of revascularization performed based on the ifr and ffr so we did almost six percent lower revascularization in an IFR guided strategy versus FFR guided strategy. Despite that, one year outcome were identical. Now we are going to show the five year outcome, which is the 90 plus percent as you need. See 80, 90 percent loss to follow up. Now, this is the I have defined flare. Second trial was Swede Heart. There also, there was a 6% difference in revascularization based on the IFR strategy versus FFR. So with that note, that is the first year data was non-inferior. Now five year, lot of surprise. And I can tell you when they presented Euro PCR, this was a big news that now all of a sudden that you have a MACE rate tended towards better for the FFR lower 18.4 versus 21 so almost three plus three percent difference but what is more important is all cause mortality almost three percent difference in favor of ffr 6.16 versus nine so very very shocking a lot of people we still don't have a clear answer why it is but this is where the data are all cause mortality unplanned revascularization was no different but look at the total revascularization almost six percent difference in favor of FFR having a lower, lower revascularization and no difference in MI. Now, patients who are deferred revascularization, they were identical. So this is the big issue. And particularly, they've said that let's talk about mortality, non-cardiovascular, cardiovascular, both of them were lower. And many of them are because of the sudden death, because of heart failure, and so on and so forth. They are the exact cause of the cardiac death also. Uh, so clearly, the somehow, at five years, defined flare, loss to FFR uh, to the versus IFR. Now, this is a seed heart, which is also presented five year data came last year in uh, Jack published. You see there, there's about 1.5% mortality difference even there. So there is a trend and so the MACE rate slightly lower. So seems to be the curves do separate in favor of FFR. As you know, Mount Sinai is the FFR lab. We do IFR 15%, patient who are renal failure, sorry, patient particularly on the valve cases or patient AOS, AS and more important, if they are more than one, the bronchodilators, then only we use IFR. So we have been FFR team. Now, second FAME three trials, remember FFR guided PCI versus cabbage. Uh, this is a FAME. One year data were presented where PCI lost completely in terms of lower 
lower uh, all cause death mi stroke or repeat revascularization in the cabbage group compared to pci now they presented data of the 3 year of the death mi and stroke which is 97% of patients and you see here at least now curves started getting they were you know at one year quite different then becomes little only in favor of cabbage so no significant difference now only there is a trend towards favor in cabbage group 9.2 versus 12 in terms of uh, death mi and stroke at follow-up now individual endpoints are here repeat revascularization and mi continues to dominate the difference between pci versus cabbage cabbage having lower of these event stroke slightly lower but not significant and the rest is shown here so now also we learn that basically PCI does much better for the low syntax score and high syntax score cabbage as we knew before. Now, you say, well, let's get the, get the historical syntax. The death MI stroke or death, clearly what has done that event rate has significantly decreased across the border. Why? Because procedures are better. We are at multiple adjunct therapy. So overall, MACE rate as well as death rate has decreased now uh, in uh, two time zones about 10 years apart. Uh, so now, so this basically is that more complex CAD. So same message which we I mentioned, complex go for cabbage, simpler can still go for PCI. Now, then EBC main, three year, and EBC main was the stepwise provisional where 22% require stenting of the side branch compared to dual stent strategy into 230 patients in each. And therefore, it was a culotte stent was the predominant dual stent strategy, not the mini crush or DK crush. And uh, basically showed, as you see here, majority was culotte and, uh, or tap. And basically at one year, these are the data, like the height of the uh, blue bar, which is the stepwise versus systemic red, slightly lower, but no significant difference in the p-value, uh, except the stent thrombosis 0 0.09 trend. Now at three years, you can see a significant difference in TLR. 6% lower in systemic dual, uh, I mean in the stepwise provisional versus dual and rest of the endpoints were not different but key is that seems to be that stepwise provisional is a preferred approach and they actually make this conclusion one and three year and look at the final conclusion these are the three year endpoints of the TLR and the primary endpoint that they clearly said go with the one stent not necessary to decide the number of stents before you start because the stepwise provisional approach is the technique of choice for bifurcation left main stem stenosis and this i can tell you is totally different than what has been taught by the dk crush mini crush for the left main so they basically advocating go with the one stent in 22 percent you may have to put a second stent by tap technique or cool out whatever it is but that's completely fine because that gives you the better long-term data so they basically only question remain could you have done better with a two stent approach if it could have been a DK crash? We do not know. It was a culotte. And remember, culotte has been negative in their own trial. Culotte has been negative in their own trial uh, in the past, including the DK crash 3. And see here, there was a provisional versus EBC2 study, five year data. Uh, clearly, 16% required two stent in a non left main non-left main provisional T versus culotte and basically showed that culotte was not superior. You see there, uh, clearly culotte has a little higher event rate, numerically higher event rate. So therefore, I still very skeptical of the data of the EBC main when these work, authors make it a plan that uh, or recommendation that two stand stepwise approach is better compared to two. Then we have the picolity 2, three-year data of the drug-coated balloon versus drug eluting in a small vessel less than 2.75. You can see here, it was the Elutex uh, SVDCB compared to Everlumus eluting stent zines, and the patients were followed for three years, and the oh, rest of the points were all clear, but very important here, look at that now. The MI, TLR, vessel thrombosis and overall may significantly lower in the red bar, which is the DCB. Unbelievable. So basically now the pendulum has swung on the other side that patients with the straightforward small vessels probably do better with the drug coated balloon versus drug looting. Now we know that these are not available in the United States, but will be available soon because we are part of the Med Alliance uh, uh, 
the stent of serolumus and we have done 17 the highest in the world enroller in the trial at present uh, but clearly the uh, drug coated stent is coming uh, to america there are four trials going on the last very quickly is post pci qfr remember the flavor trial was randomizing patient pci guided by ffr or ivus and that's where the this is the trial but what they did is that if you do a post procedure quantitative flow ratio. Now, what is QFR? And QFR basically is a computation, AI-based computation of FFR from 3D QCA and trimi frame count. We actually will have it by within few weeks. We are having a legal problem. They have suggested we are in the contract with the institution. But look at that. By 3D picture, with this AI-based uh, computation of FFR from the 3D QCA and trimi frame count, it tells you exactly the QFR. Look at the QFR versus FFR. 0.74 distal RCA, QFR was 0.75. So this is basically, there have been a few trials have been done. So basically what it do, you can give adenosine, but no wire needed. So just by the angiogram, you can have a FFR type. Uh, then this basically did post PCI Q QFR, where the stent was placed, they did uh, showed basically the same thing which have been shown, that if your paste post PCI QFR is low, less than 0.9, and so is associated with more trouble. So basically less than 0.9 or more than 0.9 has a higher event rate as shown here, 6.1 versus 2. Now, in this trial, because of the IVAS being done in the IVAS group, they have a very important observation I wanted to share with you, uh, which a lot of people did not believe, which I will always have been saying, that when you open the stent, expand the stent, either underexpanded, adequate, or overexpanded. So, overexpansion of the stent was associated with, see, the stent overexpansion uh, on a multivariate analysis was significant predictor of subsequent restenosis, 10 versus 2.6. So don't overexpand the stent less than five millimeter. Classical. I the key is that don't make it too big. Too big. Very important. Lastly, let me just go quickly. The calcific nodule imaging. That is impact of the eruptive versus non-eruptive calcific nodule, morphology on acute and long-term outcome. After stenting, this is coming up, uh, the data of the calcific nodule, we are coming out from our side also, and we have published a case report of both uh, using the IVL, or rotational threctomy shaker or shaver or shaker, uh, basically for the calcific nodule. And this is basically showing that eruptive calcific nodule is, there is a thrombus and there is a disruption compared to non-eruptive calcific nodule, which is the healed and chronic stage. So key is, uh, eruptive calcific nodule is early stage, and we know the data have come. Calcific nodule as a cause of acute coronary syndrome. In the past, used to be benign, but now OCT is teaching us that more cases of acute coronary syndrome, even calcific lesion comes back, and that goes back to, uh, it's the most common in the right coronary artery. Various segments are shown here. And uh, the important point is, in this study, about 35% percent one third got athrectomy despite the calcific nodule only one third got the athrectomy and uh, what difference was in eruptive versus non-eruptive let me just take you through eruptive you have maximum eruptive is early stage so there is a less calcium there is a nodule but less calcium as you can see here and less negative remodeling in non-eruptive more negative remodeling and thicker calcium then once you open them post stent minimum lumen is much higher in the eruptive calcific nodule, stent expansion is better, less malopposition, and, but point is, you have the protrusion within the stent is much higher when you have a eruptive calcific nodule because this is more of a liquid, not really hard sheet of calcium, so it goes through the stent start. So basically, the eruptive calcific nodule does better in the PCI compared to non-eruptive, but what does it mean? And this is actually you shows the deformation, more deformation of the eruptive versus non-eruptive, uh, shown here. But outcome, look at that, better lumen, but higher TLF, TLR, MI uh, at uh, two-year follow-up. So despite better lumen, there is a paradox that you have a higher restenosis rate in the eruptive calcific nodule. That can be simply explained. The process is very active compared to non-eruptive, Passive, the inflammatory process has subsided. This is basically an example of the eruptive, and they come back with a shadow, as you can show here uh, very nicely. And these are the uh, two-year predictor of TLF. Now, look at this one, eruptive, but athrectomy did not make it. 
Atherectomy did not make a difference in the calcific or non-calcific nodule. Uh, in terms of their outcome, rest have been shown here, most important being the eruptive calcific nodule. Now, and this is very nicely, that uh, is the, your central figure, good expansion and round stent shape in the eruptive, compared to non-eruptive, both were there about half and half. The stent expansion was more eccentric and uh, less and so, but associated with 12.5% in the non-eruptive and eruptive 19.8 TLF, which is much higher. So this is a paradox, uh, clearly, and uh, very interesting. So nice is the editorial by Dr. Brott, uh, the calcified nodule paradox, that you have better lumen, but high risk stenosis. I think it just tells you the likely continued inflammation and projection of those calcific nodule to the stent stud. So let me sum it up. IFR versus FFR for overall MACE at five years, a defined flare, overall was ident equal but definitely down for the TLR and mortality. Clearly, IFR lost to FFR. Second, cabbage versus FFR guided PCI for multivessel CAD at three years in the FAME 3 trial. They still remain positive, although in the past I used to say two to three hands, but only one thumb up because it's just about 0 0.07 in the hard endpoint. But if you reverse it, it still becomes very significant. Then, stepwise provisional versus dual stenting for distal left main at three years. Clearly, according to them, uh, one thumb, I think they want uh, probably two thumbs, but I still think because they did not did the trial correctly with the technique which had been superior. And superior is DK crash or maybe mini crash. So therefore, I would not put a two, two thumbs up for that. And the lastly, DCB or DES in small vessels, clearly two thumbs up as shown here. Then calcific nodule are being increasingly recognized in 5 to 30% of calcified lesion and many cause acute coronary syndrome. Eruptive calcific nodule seems to be represent early stage of atherosclerosis compared to non-eruptive and both calcific nodule behaves differently. Eruptive calcific nodule has better stent expansion and, and uh, deformation but higher TLR and TVF at follow-up. Hence, appropriate treatment of calcific nodule during PCI is vital. Question number three questions, following statement is false eh, regarding the outcome of IFR versus FFR in the defined flare. Similar MACE rate, between two similar MI rate, similar mortality rate, similar unplanned revascularization, so sim higher overall TLR in IFR group. And answer is C, sim not similar mortality rate, a higher mortality in the IFR group compared to FFR. Second. Following a statement is false regarding the results of FAME 3 trial comparing FFR guided PCI versus cabbage. Similar mortality between two groups, similar stroke rates between two groups, higher TLR in PCI group versus cabbage, trend towards higher MACE in PCI group versus cabbage, and similar MI rates in PCI group versus cabbage. Clearly, that the answer is sim not similar MI rate. There is a higher MI rate in the PCI group versus cabbage. Third question, following statement is incorrect regarding the short and two-year outcomes of eruptive versus non-eruptive calcific nodule. Better stent expansion in eruptive, more uniform and circular stent expansion in eruptive, no impact of atheroablation in both types of calcific nodule, lower TLR in eruptive versus non-eruptive calcific nodule, less negative remodeling in eruptive versus non-eruptive. As you can know that there is a more negative remodeling and basically the lower the TLR is lower TLR in eruptive versus non-eruptive. It's a high TLR in eruptive versus non-eruptive. With that note, I finish it exactly at 9 o'clock. Thank you very much. A uh, little follow-up here. Uh, uh, one or two questions somewhat related to it. But first of all, uh, just like in 14 years, uh, session number 168 with your uh, presentation was just remarkable, the amount of uh, trials which have been covered and almost all relevant to exactly what we do. I think one of your top recommendations was uh, 19 minutes, 47 seconds with the Air Karma 1.2 contrast of 100. That was uh, our uh, timing. And I think one point that we want to make is that in, kind, in cases where we are supposed to use uh, guide extension, whatever the three guide extensions that are available, um, just plan the strategy exactly what you want to do it once the guide extension is there. We've shown how to get the guide extension to where you want. Uh, try to do the procedure fast. Uh, so the risk of uh, thrombus formation and slow flow in the vessel uh, uh, does not happen. Wonderful. Exactly closing at 60 minutes, uh, the advertised time, 8 to 9. Uh, been a pleasure bringing you this session. And we'll see you July 18th for session number 169. Thank you. Thank you.